Hi everyone, today I wanted to do kind of a brief little video about all these surveys that you've been sending us that have been helping us to kind of tailor the class and make sure that we have content in there that really um, fits what you're interested in. Uh, and we do this every year, um, kind of trying to adapt the class over the years to what we're seeing in the students. Um, and so this is kind of a summary analysis of all the different surveys that you filled out for us over the last couple of weeks, right? Um, and partially I give this back to you just as a way that you can understand what uh, the other students in the class are doing, interested in, what they feel about what's going on. So, um, you know, one of the first questions we asked was what are the major areas of study or work of the students? What are you interested in looking at? And um, as you can see by, you know, the, the there was a big interest in economics, uh, but then data science, computer science, archaeology, complex systems, but all these are fairly small, right? Like of the people who uh, analyzed or filled out this question, right, um, only seven said economics, right? But I think that generally my understanding is that, you know, it takes a certain amount of, of, of responsiveness to even get to answer. So usually this is a fairly good characterization of, of what the class composition is, uh, is about. Um, Archaeology is always interesting, right? Like uh, that's uh, one that we don't see as much in traditional age-based modeling, but there have been some fantastic age-based models of archaeological systems, right? Uh, such as the classic Anasazi model. So how many people self-assess as a programmer? Well, this is a pretty typical result. About two-thirds of the, of the students so say that they are programmers and about one third say they're not. Um, we always like to ask this question again at the end of the course uh, to see if you've changed your opinion now. Um, and in fact, I've been teaching these workshops for years now and it's quite typical to have students coming in and saying, I'm not a programmer, but look at this great model I did. I'm not a programmer, but look at all this, you know, all this analysis I was able to carry out, right? And hopefully you'll feel the same way by the time we get done with the course. In terms of programming experience, with uh, five being, you know, I'm a, I'm a great programmer and one being I have never programmed before in my life, as you can see, most people are somewhere in the two to three range uh, with, uh, you know, points all along the way, right? Um, so uh, if you find yourself in that same space, you're in exactly the right place or exactly the right course. Uh, but, you know, it's always helpful. Go on the boards, ask questions, see if people uh, will respond to them. And you might get some of those people who list themselves as a five uh, to kind of help you out with some of your uh, coding problems that you might have along the way. Modeling experience comes out of exactly almost the same uh, ratios and results, right? So most people consider them to see be some kind of a model or introductory modeler, uh, but very few consider themselves to be expert modelers, right? Uh, and, and again, this is something uh, that hopefully this course will help you move more to that five uh, rating as you go along. Now, this is an interesting one. We always ask what your expectation of the course is. A lot of people articulate a basic understanding of ABM. Uh, some people mention learning new concepts to help them develop their career. Uh, a stronger understanding of emergent and complex systems and how to study them. Of course, agent-based modeling very much is a complement to the work on complex systems. Uh, and if you want more understanding of that, I highly recommend Melanie Mitchell's MOOC in this same uh, platform on uh, complex systems. Uh, a lot of students who are working on theses and hope this course helps them to understand their research questions, which we get quite a bit, uh, and hopefully it will. Uh, if you go on and uh, publish a model that you wrote in this course out of your, uh, on, it was part of your thesis or whatever, please let us know. We'd love to hear back about those kind of things. Uh, improving your understanding of complex systems and developing tools to distill the drivers of complex systems. Again, you know, there's a big relationship between agent-based modeling and complex systems. And uh, we, you know, we really think of agent-based modeling as one of the primary tools for understanding complex systems. So that makes perfect sense that people would often express that as an area of expectation for the course. And then, you know, then we always see a bunch of applications, right? Applying the agent-based modeling with corporate finance, to public finance, policy making, economics, right? Uh, so we hopefully, you know, we, we've tried to make examples in a lot of different areas, uh, but hopefully if nothing else, you get the tools out of this that you need uh, to build those models yourself, even if we don't have an exact example in say public finance and policy making. What phenomenon would you like to build a model of? Um, this is always interesting. People say everything from scientific knowledge, 
the shadow banking system, bias, brains, building evacuations. I noticed a couple just looking through it on my own on medical um, uh, issues, disease spread, things like that. Uh, so we get people from all different kinds of backgrounds, all different kind of interest areas. Um, and it's exciting to me to see what people are actually working on. And then we took all those answers you gave us and threw it into a big word cloud. Of course, words like model and ABM show up right out of the way. Understand, right? People, a lot of the, the work is trying to understand or learn or use something, right? But if you dig a little deeply, you see a lot of words related to social, to value, to science, to rules, to local uh, 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 elements, right? Uh, biology. Uh, high potential um, studies, right? And so I think there's a bunch of different areas that people are applying these models and it's interesting to me to see how those move over the years, how those change, those patterns change. Finally, the last question we asked was what model in NetLogo is similar to a model that you want to build, right? Uh, and two of the answers were interesting. The language change model, which kind of tries to model how language changes over time and how different groups have influence on that, uh, which is an interesting model. And then the segregation model, which we've talked about quite a bit in this class. But then this other one that came up by a couple of answers was the Myosin model, which I had never uh, heard of before. So I went to OpenABM to check it out myself. It's apparently a model of the Mayan civilization uh, and how it evolves over time. And so I think that's an interesting, you know, we get different answers every year. It's always interesting to see what people answer. And of course, a large percentage of you said that you simply didn't find a single particular model that was similar to your model. Maybe you found multiple ones or you want features from this one, this one, this one, that's all fine. Uh, so um, anyways, I hope this kind of helps get you get an understanding of what the other students in the class are doing uh, and so that you can understand uh, what this course is all about and who your classmates are. Uh, if you have questions about this, post them on the discussion forum. I'm sure people would be interested in talking about some of their responses. Uh, take care.